What's going on guys, t 2 rx 6 here back for a Thursday review and today we're taking a look at the very first part of the uh, Warbitron set which is Airburst. Now there's a lot of controversy surrounding this guy and we're going to get to that in a little bit. Um, but before we do that, let's actually look at the toy and all that stuff. Uh, if you want to stay for the controversy part, we'll put that at the end and we'll be good to go. So this is the box that it comes in and I feel like they very hard try to emulate Fans Project. Now originally I thought that this company was Fans Project, um, just kind of disguising themselves, but the more they go on the less I think that that's actually the truth. So what you do is kind of in some of Fans Project styles, there's a slip cover here. Um, very cool artwork on the cover with the outline silhouette of uh, Airburst and then the Bruticus in the background. Um, you can slip the cover off and very much this looks like it is really really trying to be a fans project type box um, except that diesel is probably about the same size and the box is not made out of this material but very much so with the, the grid work and granted this is a G1 throwback but I feel like everything about this is screaming that it's trying to be fans project and let's actually take a look at Airburst himself. And this is the next thing that makes me feel this is not Fans Project. So he's a pretty good shuttle. I mean, everything comes together pretty nice. Um, but there's a lot of little flaws in this guy that I'm not sure if you can see, like where things just kind of didn't get molded completely correct. There's a lot of not very clean edges on here. And this is something that I don't tend to find on the very polished... Uh, fans project toys like this um, just kind of looking it over. I really don't see any parts where I see uh, Exaggerated sprue marks maybe a tiny one inside there, but uh, I feel like this guy has quite a few of them going on here and the plastic Is gonna be extremely hard to kind of convey this in a video sense But there's something about it that doesn't feel right and in fact there's actually parts like this uh, landing gear here. Uh, when I took this out the first time, this popped right off. And I don't know if you can see, but that is stressed right out of the box from the manufacturer or whatever from just putting this little pin in. So the plastic is not super strong, and I do honestly worry that this plastic uh, is going to have pieces that break, especially with the little tabs. Um, the tolerances on this guy don't feel as precise like uh, a fans project toy feels like sometimes they're frustrating and stuff but I feel like everything moves with purpose um, and things like this uh, don't feel like they're super you know difficult to move around let's see uh, if we take someone like this and we can grab this and kinda well I guess it is a little bit tough on him but no nah, once it moves it's pretty easy uh, for this uh, brainstorm but yeah like on these ones they're very stiff so much so that I couldn't actually get them out of here when they were locked away in the chest and I actually had to uh, push something in there to pull it out and you can see that kind of left a mark because the plastic is not super strong and these tolerances are definitely not right I'll never be able to get these back open on video because there's no... Oh, finally. I think I just damaged the plastic a little bit more on this side by jamming my nail underneath there. But, uh, yeah, okay, so I've got it open. But it's very tight. There we go. There should have been some kind of tab or something to make them come out. And uh, the fact that the plastic is stressed out of the box, that kind of worries me a little bit. But, overall, he's a good space shuttle. Let's compare him real quick to his biggest competitor. Um, well, let's go over the articulation. You have a little bit of thruster movement, and that's about it. There's nothing else going on aside from the fact that the wings will always flop around because they are, uh, you know, just pegged in there. So let's actually bring in what I would say is probably the biggest competitor at this point. Uh direct competitor and this is the TFC Superion and you can see that the overall size actually the Superion jet is bigger than the space shuttle um, there's obviously more uh, heft to the overall size of the space shuttle 
but a lot of that's kind of an optical illusion. We'll get to that a little bit after. Um, weight, they actually end up feeling about the same, so I'm not really, don't feel too much different. Sorry for the cut there, the phone in my house apparently started ringing. I wanted to just point out before we move on that the plastic quality on the TFC one does feel quite a bit superior to this. Now, I do feel like, again, this is very much emulating the fans project way because um, it's that very matte plastic, very much like you would have here on the uh, the uh, revolver. But when I tap revolver, like the plastic feels, well, that's a hollow panel, but the, the plastic feels better than this guy. I don't know. It's close though. I would say it's really close to the plastic on this, but I've never felt afraid that something's gonna break on this where this one's been different. So let's actually get this guy transformed and uh, we'll start with his legs here and well actually let's take these off entirely first and we'll get back to those later and that leaves you with the uh, core body here and we're gonna take these and we're gonna pull these on out like so we're going to pop these top pieces off because there is nothing that we can do with these. We're going to take these and uh, you want to rotate, well, kind of rotate these thrusters back a bit. Rotate this around and then flip the toe piece, which is so tight. I don't know. I'm going to see if you can hear it. Like, <laughs> look, more stress marks. <laughs> there we go. Uh, you know what? Be right back. Alright, so we're back, and I really don't want to stress out the joints on this guy, so uh, we're going to go ahead and squirt him down with a little bit of this uh, WD-40 here, which you shouldn't have to do if it's made correctly. So we'll go ahead and do that, and hopefully... We won't stress mark his second foot. In fact, we should probably WD-40 his first foot here that we've just done because uh, that's just absurd that it was so hard to move. Oh, it's still so horrible. That's the sound of plastic that's going to break when you hear noises like that. Awful. Shouldn't be like that. Anyway, let's see if we've helped this foot out a little bit better. Um, I don't like that. I do not like when my toy makes that noise. So then this is his foot like this, and you just take these thrusters here, and you kind of angle them down to make a heel spur, like so. And we can actually take this. Now, you didn't have to take these off. What the instructions tell you to do is actually just kind of take them and fold them up like this. Fold this back piece down, which will peg into this clip on the back. And then, well, you do have to remove this gun. Another really tight port that is uh, stressing out there just from plugging it on in. Fold this down. And then they kind of show this gun pegged in on his leg like that. But I'd prefer him to actually hold his gun. So we'll put this one back on too so we don't forget about it. If we can get the gun off. There we go. And there we go. It's all plugged in. We got this ready to go. We can now move on to the upper part of the robot here. So, what we're going to start with doing here is uh, flip this nose cone piece, unclip it like that, and uh, again, stress marked plastic. Uh, this was stress marked even prior to doing anything with this guy. We're going to open these up, open up all these little flaps here. We technically shouldn't have done the nose cone yet, but I got excited. So we open all these flaps here like this, and this is going to allow us to rotate out the shoulders of the robot here and bring them to the front, like so. Then we can kind of adjust the arms, close these panels all the way down, and then get in here and you find that there is no way to get the hands out in any meaningful 
fashion, so you just kind of have to push on this edge and pull on the hand and hope that you can get it out of here. And this is a struggle. Come on. Oh man, I think I just like ripped my nail off trying to get this. So we'll try with a prop here. There we go, we've got it mostly out. There we go. And my nail is certainly hurting, so something jammed under there. So there's one of them out. Thank goodness that we still have a second one to do. This one here works a lot better. That's the, uh, again, plastic tolerance issues just feel like it's it's got problems in that regard. So, we got two hands like this. They look pretty okay. We kind of come off to the shoulders here. Um, this, once you have this, you fold these little tiny panels on in and then you fold them all the way closed here like so. And then you take these and you bring them out and you flip them all the way around and these make big humongous shoulder pads on him. And I think I've done something wrong with his uh, back kibble here. I don't believe you're actually supposed to close these. I think you do it like this and leave it open. So you can actually kind of adjust the shoulder pads down like this there we go that's better like this you can see we got the shoulder pads just kind of making that U there I'm gonna check the instructions here before we talk about the robot mode to make sure that's right and then all this does is kind of angles like this and uh, that's the best you store this backpack so he's got quite the backpack going on here and, uh, yeah, that's the robot. And he's not bad. He's a little he's beefy. Uh, again, tolerances just feel a little bit weird. We take this part here, and we got these little things, so you can actually have them hold them, and you can slide these forward if you want them to be uh, wielding two, I guess, rocket launchers. Or you can actually leave them like this, and, uh, peg them into the side of the arms to arm him, which I think is probably how he's going to end up sitting on my shelf. Uh, I don't know, you might like it the other way, if you like the uh, blades of the space shuttle facing forward. I do think I prefer them that way, I think it gives them a much better look from the front, and that's how I expect my robot to look better. So there we go, we got the two missile launchers, and then you have these guns. And they do telescope out, and they have a little mechanism inside that doesn't work because it wasn't slotted good enough. And what it's supposed to do is, you got these little holes in the gun, and when you get there, it's supposed to, like, tab them on in. But it takes virtually no force to just pull it too far. So there is never a point that you're going to pull this and actually be able to stop because <laughs> it slides so tough inside here that when it finally gives, it just pulls itself right out. Let's try with this one. Nope. This one's even easier, and it still won't work. The only way you can do it is to be super, super slow about it. And then it leaves a little wiggly of a gun here. So, uh, yeah, that's the robot. Uh, as you can see, with his hands, he does have some finger articulation here, which I feel is a complete unnecessary thing, but whatever. And it looks like Warbitron's starting to flip you off with the way his middle finger is uh or air burst I should say is starting to flip you off with the way he uh is holding his hand but whatever we'll give him his two guns and there we go there is air burst and he's not a bad robot I actually think he's pretty cool um articulation is solid uh head is on a ball joint so you get plenty of articulation out of it to do everything you want uh, light pipe to eyes, yes. Let's see if we can actually get them to show up any light piping. 
sort of, there we go. You can kind of see it's a purpley light piping. Would have rather it be a red, but yeah, purple's okay. I guess I can't seem to recall um, Blast Off if that was his proper colors or not. Uh, a little disappointed because of the way the chest works. He's now got chest blemishes. Um, I'll probably never take this landing gear out ever again. Articulation on this guy. Uh, you got a hinge up here, a rotational joint at the shoulder, so you can get 180 if you can clear his big shoulder pads. Um, again, the hinge in and out, the swivel, the double jointed elbow, so he can get quite a range of mo motion only blocked by the uh, sides of his arms here. Uh, wrist has its own swivel, which is nice. Uh, he does have a waist joint here. He's got uh, pretty solid legs, blocked a little bit by this hip armor, which you can bring up if you really want to, but that just kind of looks ridiculous. So let's just leave it at that and call it good enough. Goes all the way back, in and out. It's a very solid uh, friction uh, joint. The thigh swivel, a knee that is not fully extended. Uh, you can see it's just on the, uh, just a regular knee joint. Uh, no swivel down there, you have to go for the thighs. Unless this just isn't pulling out all the way, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, there's no, no swivel at the knee, so that's all going to be based on that upper thigh swivel. The foot, of course, you saw the ridiculously difficult uh, pivot, but it's also on a ball joint, so you can get a little bit of an ankle tilt out of this guy. So all in all, he's a good poseable figure. Uh, the plastic does feel, again, a little bit cheap. Uh, let's actually do a jump cut. So you may be asking why the jump cut. Maybe you noticed that something disappeared. But here he is next to a TFC uh, Air Raid here or F-15 Eagle, whichever one you can per you would prefer. You can see in robot mode he is a pretty fair amount bigger than Air Raid here. But uh, let's bring in one of the other competitors here and see how he stacks up. And this is the uh, Feral Rex Bovis. And you can see Bovis is still quite a bit bigger than uh, Air Burst here. And feels beefier and is made out of better quality plastic and all that stuff but this guy isn't bad and uh, I I gotta say it was uh, my good friend Bobby who told me that I needed to get this guy uh, or get on the train to get these guys and he's not wrong these are gonna be really good toys I think this is gonna be a good set uh, again the plastic does have its little bits of issues but generally I'd say like you know except for maybe like the little landing gears which I'm never gonna touch and stuff he's probably gonna be okay um, the only other thing I fear is a couple of these little tabs but ultimately it's probably not gonna affect him in any of his modes so whatever whoops we forgot his uh, second gun there so yeah he seems pretty good um, you can see here when we bring in our little fans project guy uh, everything like down to like the way they sculpted the head and maybe that's just the blast off head or something but it very much feels like the fans project I mean down to the chest and everything um, actually the plastic quality of this does kind of feel like the plastic quality on this because this doesn't feel as good of plastic quality as the more recent fans project stuff such as uh, brainstorm and you know roadbuster and stuff like that so, I don't know, I guess it's still kind of a possibility, but, yeah, I don't know. So, I'm going to transform this guy back to his jet mode, because he actually comes packaged in his, uh, in his robot mode. Uh, I should say space shuttle mode, I should, I'm going to transform him back into, um, because he comes packaged in robot mode. And while we're doing that, I'm not going to say, and this goes like this, I'm just going to kind of show it on camera while we're doing it, and let's talk about the controversy on this guy. Now this guy was marketed to be coming out on all the different stores such as TF Source and Ages 3 and Up and all this stuff and uh, yeah he was really you know had a, a fairly large publicity you know following because this, this is a quote-unquote brand new company that is making you know something that's really 
really uh, huge in scale, which you can imagine why a lot of people would actually think that this is probably fan's project, especially compared to the uh, aesthetics of the much smaller fan's project toy. So, he's had a large following and a, uh, a lot of retailers have picked him up. And now it's for the release, and I do, if you follow me, you know I do pretty much all my purchases off BBTS. Um, not sponsored by them, please, if you want to sponsor me, let me know, because I take that. But I am not, I just do it because I like their pre-ordering system, and I like the fact that I can just go ahead and cancel my account, or cancel my pre-orders, uh, if I don't want something. Uh, for instance, the Daka Toy Skyfire has been on and off my pre-orders about six times at this point. Um, I think he's going to finally end up staying, but I've kind of gone back and forth on him a large number of times, and I can't do that with any other service besides uh, BBTS. So that's always been a plus for me. And uh, anyway, other retailers have gotten this guy, such as TF Source and Ages 3 and Up and all that, and... Uh, now that this guy is released, it's kind of come out that BBTS has a quote-unquote 90-day monopoly, and this is the terms that Warbitron has used uh, to define the relationship or whatever they have with BBTS to actually do that. And that's kind of a crappy thing to do. Um, there's a lot of customers that are, you know, mad because, you know, there's gonna the people who are getting this from BBTS are going to get it 90 days before anyone else and all that stuff and they get up in arms and I can understand that that but I think that the people who are hurt most by this is not going to be the uh, the customers it's going to be your retailers because you have places like ages 3 and up whoa that hurt you have places like ages 3 and up that have cancelled their orders and granted they're doing awesome and giving their customers 15% off coupons and stuff like that for their next order which I implore people to take advantage of if you've gotten this but they basically you know people are well there's a couple places they're stop uh, canceling orders and you know that there's gonna be a bunch of people who are not gonna stick with something like TF Source because the consumer has a very much a need it now mentality so they're going to jump ship and they're going to go to, you know, BBTS and that's going to leave your retailers that have set pre-orders thinking that they had, you know, say like 200 units of this already, you know, guaranteed sales on it. And now they're going to get this product in and it's not going to be able to move. So that's going to influence the decision and could possibly influence the decision to stock later Warbitron bots. And I don't think that that's going to be the case in this scenario. But it kind of sets up this dangerous precedence where, you know, companies like Mastermind have said, you know, they basically live uh, release to release on their toys and, you know, one success funds the next. And it's like, if any one of these, especially if this is a startup company, it's not a fan's project that's just hiding behind the names, you know, like, if any one of these fails to sell, um you know, at least in the numbers that they're projecting, are all the parts going to come out? And I just think that that's, it also sets a bad precedence, because, like, when you get a retailer exclusive, you can kind of expect to pay a little more. It's, you know, if you look at the, the, the Masterpiece Acid Storm, I'm fairly certain he's more expensive than Masterpiece Starscream was uh, when it was, like, the Target or uh, Walmart exclusive. But I feel like they also jack up the price, whereas if you had gotten, say, Masterpiece Prowl coming out was going to come out at all retailers, then I feel like he's only going to be like a $30 toy. So when you start making it so if all the companies jump off on Warbitron products, and this is a solid product, that if BBTS is the only one that keeps it, there's nothing from... You know, when the when Warbitron goes on to the Stunicons, which I've heard is their next project, there's nothing keeping BBTS in check on their prices if the other retailers are gone. So it's really kind of crappy on Warbitron to do something like that and uh, not effectively communicate with both the customers and the, the uh, companies that are going to stock their product. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think if it wasn't for the fact that by the time this whole controversy had broken out, uh, this guy was already in my pile of loot and I had already clicked ship, out of precedence I might have gone ahead and uh, 
drop the pre-order on this guy because um, I don't like that business tactic. I think it's it's dirty and underhanded and deceitful. Um, as it stands, I got the first piece. I'm going to have to assess and see if I want to get the rest. I do think it's a, a solid toy and I really do like the idea of having a Hercules uh, size, you know, Bruticus for my collection. And uh, as of right now, I guess they're the only people doing it. So, this is T2RX6. I don't think that this is necessarily as great of a product as I was hoping it would be, but I still think it's pretty solid. Um, whether their business decisions influence your per uh, your urge to purchase this or not, uh, that's up to you. You can leave that in the comments. I'd love to read what you guys think about what they did. And uh, yeah, I will still be putting up my Shark to Con review tomorrow. I just wanted to get this guy done today. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. One more thing to point out before we go, because I'm not showing the combined mode, but it does make me question if maybe I am still should think that this is just a poor business decision on fans projects part which has been known to do some poor business decisions though uh, you pull this out and uh, that is very much a make toys slash fans project combining port going on um, yep I don't know I don't know if it is fans project or not and this just isn't a uh, quite as good of a release but there you go so alright see you guys tomorrow